I've got three different iPad mounting solutions here. A yoke mount, a suction mount, and a kneeboard mount. And I get a lot of questions about the pros and cons of each. So I just wanted to take one flight where I demoed all of them side by side and gave you my first hand thoughts and feedback. And the cows are pooping this morning. Let's start with the yoke mount. Now I used a yoke mount in the past, but it was with a full sized iPad, which just totally got in the way. I'd always hit my stomach in the flare and stuff. I just, I just didn't like it. So during this test, I started by mounting my iPad mini entirely too high to try to avoid this issue. You know, it's funny now watching the footage, I'm thinking, yeah, that, like, totally, that isn't gonna work. So right now I can't see my altitude. That's only sort of important. So then I moved it down to where the rest of you guys, a lot smarter than me, would have started with it the whole time. And so uh, when, when the yoke was all the way forward, like on the ground, uh, I still couldn't see very much, but once it came back into a more normal, kind of flight normal, flight neutral position, I could actually see pretty well. The other thing you do is just scoot your seat back and you don't have any of these issues, but I like sitting really close to the controls. Now the benefit of using yoke mount is that it will work in the vast majority of GA airplanes. So it's an easy and straightforward solution. The other benefit is that the info is right in front of you. Like literally the close thing to your eyeballs is now the iPad. So it's easy to read and it's accessible and it's at an angle that's pretty easy to read too. Now that being said, there are a few downsides of yoke mounts that really stuck out to me. And the first is that anytime you move the yoke, the entire iPad moves with it. I just feel like it really caught my peripheral vision with this swinging screen in there. Didn't love that. And I think over the course of time, you'd probably get used to this and just your brain would tune it out, but it really stuck out to me at first. One clarification though, is that I didn't notice that the yoke was any heavier. You might think having like a a weight up there that you're swinging around would make it harder. I really don't notice any difference. So I really just notice it in my eyesight and not as much in my field. The next con is possible freedom of movement issues. If you use a yoke mount, you really want to abide by that checklist item of flight controls, free and correct. Freedom of movement is huge here. And if you aren't careful, where you mount the iPad and where you're sitting can lead to issues in the flare. You might have to play with the mount location and your seat location a little bit to find the right balance. And lastly, I just really didn't love looking down at the iPad. It's really nice that all the info is right there in front of you. But for me, I was having to look down and and that, that might not be the case in other cockpits or if you're sitting lower or your seat's configured differently than mine. But I caught myself looking down and looking up, looking down and looking up. And you know, when you're really trying to look outside the airplane. So then I even tried moving uh, the, the mount over to the co-pilot yoke. Is that stupid? I don't know. I don't like it. Thinking, oh man, why hasn't anyone done this? Kind of the uh, <laughs> poor man's uh, mounted iPad insert. Just put it on the other yoke. And then I realize there's a reason people are doing that. It doesn't feel natural to go turn your head almost 90 degrees just to look over here. <laughs> Maybe that's why people don't do it. I think it's a good idea. I don't know that that would really work in practice. Next, I tried the kneeboard. My initial impression was that I had to make some pretty big adjustments to the way I was sitting, so that way the yoke didn't keep hitting the iPad. Yeah, I'm gonna have to scoop back for that. I had to get my legs lower, straighten them out, just generally get them out of the way to make room for this. Having to really flatten my legs here, make sure that, uh, the yoke isn't hitting the iPad. Which solved the problem, but now I'm sitting in a way that wasn't very comfortable. And then from a usability perspective, there were two things that stuck out to me. First, I didn't really love the angle that the information that the iPad was sitting at. So I've got my iPad over here. So instead of kind of being perpendicular to you and straight on, it was a lot more flat, which you know can have glare issues. Just also, I just wasn't used to looking at the information in that configuration. So I didn't really love that. And then also, like I said a minute ago, I caught myself really looking down, looking up, looking down, looking up. It feels a little weird to look like di <laughs> directly straight down at the iPad instead of like looking up or just kind of offset a little bit. I think in the right scenario, these things would be a much better option than the other two options. If you're doing aerobatics or if you're in some sort of military aircraft where you, you know it's much different configuration than a 182. So when I get my F-16, I'll probably be using a kneeboard. So in the right situation, I think this actually wins. It's nice that it would be actually attached to you. Then I tried the suction mount, and this is what I've been using for hundreds of hours now. I think having just come fresh off of the kneeboard and the yoke mount and stuff, I think what I immediately notice again about this and part of why I really like it is it just feels like a continuation of the flight deck here. You're not having to do unnatural movements of your head to go look down. It's not anywhere in the way of the yoke or anything. I can sit as far up as I want. It's all in the same plane here, if you will. Unavoidable pun. So for me, I have found after hundreds of hours of use, this is the best option and my preferred option, but there are a few downsides. First, it might not work in some cockpit configurations, like in the Super Cub or in a similar tandem seated aircraft where there isn't a lot of room probably be better off attaching it to something else in the cockpit or just using a kneeboard. And secondly, while the suction mount is really sturdy, it can fall off. So if you're doing aerobatics or something, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the suction mount. But I can tell you in, in flying over 500 hours just with suction mounts, I've had the iPad fall off 
a total of two times, only two times. And I realized part of the part of the problem was I was just leaving the mount suctioned onto the aircraft in between flights. And once I started giving it a new seal every single time, just re-sticking it on there, uh, that's totally fixed the issue. So I haven't had it fall off since then, since I started doing that, uh, even in heavy turbulence. Now you might've noticed that my iPad case was compatible with all these mounts in the cockpit. And I use the Flyboys mounts in this video. They're not a sponsor of this channel. They're not paying me to say this. I just genuinely love and genuinely use their products. The case is specifically built for their mounts, so they're interchangeable, and you never have to take the case off of your iPad to put it into these various mounts. I'm a huge fan of their products, and I've got a 10% off coupon down in the description. And if you want more info on exactly why I love these mounts and cases so much, and to get info on the exact setup that I use, all of that and more is in the short video on the screen. So I'll see you over there.